Wacom just released their latest Windows Ink enabled smart stylus. It's called the Bamboo Ink Plus. It can replace your current laptop's pen and I've got a Surface Pen right here. We're gonna test this out, see how these things stack up. The video is sponsored by me. On my website, I'd collect all my reviews, even rank my favorite pen displays, iPads, tablets by size. It's designed to help you find the info you need before you buy. Full disclosure, the links I use on there are affiliate links to Amazon, so if you ever find any of my reviews helpful, clicking on one of those links before you buy gives a little bit of a commission from that sale back to me. It all adds up and it helps me buy more gear to review. You guys have been supporting this channel for years that way and I am super grateful. So thank you. Now, on to the review. This stylus was provided to me by the folks over at Wacom. However, this is not a sponsored review, so the opinions here are my own. I want to put an asterisk by this review because it's not a full review. It's like a partial half review. I would have loved to have tested this stylus on a dozen different PCs across the board from different manufacturers, but right now, the only thing that I have to test this on is the Surface Go that I have here in my office that I write on. And because of that, I'm structuring this as a Wacom Pen versus Surface Pen sort of video as opposed to a full-blown review. And because of that, I don't think my experiences with this pen are going to be the same that you may experience on a different device. If you use this on any other Surface device, a Surface Book, a Surface Pro, a Surface Studio, etc., you're probably going to experience the same exact thing that I'm experiencing. However, if you use this on, say, an HP device, you may have a very different experience, and I'm gonna explain why in a minute. But I've got a lot of questions to answer in this review, and number one is, what is this thing? This is Wacom's latest active stylus designed for Windows computers. It's designed with something called the Windows Universal Pen Framework. Does this mean it will work on any Windows computer? No, it does not. It will only work on laptops and tablets that already are enabled for pens. Some touchscreens are only touchscreens. They don't support pens at all. So to oversimplify how the pen works, it's not just the pen doing the work, but the digitizers underneath the screen of your tablet that are reading the position of the pen. If you don't have those receptors underneath the screen, then there is nothing that's going to be able to read the placement of where the pen is. There are primarily two digitizers out there right now. The first one is called Entrig, which is Microsoft's, and it uses it in all of their devices. And the other one is Wacom's own AES. What makes this pen special is that it has both the Entrig and the AES components inside the pen. By holding down this button for a second, you can switch between them and then you can draw on a different screen. Now before, when I mentioned that your experience with this pen might be a lot different than my experience of this pen, that's where this comes in. If you have Wacom's AES tech in your tablet, this pen's gonna perform differently than it's going to perform on my Surface Go, which is using Entrig. And if this all sounds really confusing, don't worry, you're not alone. My advice is if you're interested in this, make sure you go to Wacom's site first and check out what devices that this thing is compatible with before you make a decision. And that brings me to question two, what does this do? Pen is designed for folks who want to get the most out of their Windows Ink features on their computers, annotating screenshots, leaving notes, or in the case of what I do here on this channel, draw an illustration. In this pen, you're going to get pressure sensitivity. That means that if you press harder on the pen tip, your strokes will get darker or thicker. There's also tilt support. So say you have a tool in your app that acts like a pencil and you want to get the edge of that pencil for shading, just tilt your stylus over and you can get that graphite shading effect you're looking for. You also have access to Windows Ink's workspace with a single press of a button on the top of the pen. Another bullet point listed on the box is light touch responsiveness, but we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And lastly, it's USB rechargeable. That's a big upgrade in this pen over the previous version, which took a quadruple A battery. Those quadruple A batteries are cute, but they cost the money. In the box, you're gonna find the pen itself, a USB charging cable for recharging, the little plastic nib holder, a quick start guide. And what is this, a slow start guide? No, warranty, legal stuff, got it. Well, the pen itself isn't too bad. Let's talk about the design. It's got this ergonomic triangle design. Triangle is probably the wrong word. It's somewhere between a circle and a triangle. Tricle, circangle? Anyway, you can see what I'm talking about best if you look at it from the top. This shape is more ergonomic and it feels good when you're holding it in your hand and has the added bonus of not really rolling around on the table too much. There are two programmable buttons along the side and of course that button up along the top which activates Windows Ink. You click the top button once to open Windows Ink 
workspace. You double click the button to open the screen sketch and you click and hold to open a sticky note. It's got a nice sharp fine tip point like you'd expect on a device like this. And that little case that I mentioned, it holds a couple extra nibs. The nibs have different hardness so swapping out the nibs of your pen is going to give you a different drawing feel when you're using the stylus. I think this is a pretty good call on Wacom's part because they don't really know what kind of screen you're going to be writing on. Is the screen going to be really slick glass? And you might want to go with a little bit of a softer nib. Does it have a matte finish or an anti-glare texture or coating on it, then you're gonna wanna go with a harder nib or something that suits your needs better. The grip on the pen itself is a soft plastic. Soft is probably the wrong word. Maybe it's like a more of a matte texture, a very fine matte texture that gives the pen a good grip. And along the side, towards the back, is a little plastic piece that you can pop out, and that's where the USB cord plugs in for charging. Yep, you guessed it, comes with the USB cable for that exact purpose. The end that goes into the pen is one of the newer, smaller USB-C chargers, but the end that goes into your computer is the standard standard size USB port. Since I don't have one of the older USB ports on my Surface Go, I had to use my own USB-C port in order to charge the pen. Probably a good choice because standard USB ports are still more common, but since this is designed for tablets with pens, which tend to be the newer kind of tablets, I would assume we're pretty close to the tipping point for USB-C ports. Anyway, enough about USB-C ports. Let's get on to the nitty gritty. Let's test out this pen. Every good pen test starts with me cleaning off my screen. First things first, I have two pens. I have one of the latest Surface pens. This one is the matte black pen that I got for my uh, Surface Pro 6 review last fall. And then of course, I have Wacom's new Bamboo Ink Plus. So to start off with, I'm gonna be starting with the Surface pen and I'm just going to start by drawing some nice subtle lines, pressing lightly, and then, you know, getting heavier just to feel the pressure and get a feel for it. Now, one thing that I do notice on all Surface devices because they're using Intrigue technology under the hood is I always get some wiggle to it, always some jitter. You can see it a little bit there. I got a little bit more over here. That's common and I expect the same thing from Wacom's pen. So let's undo those, grab this pen, let's check this out. So I'm gonna put my pen down and again, I'm coming in here and right off the bat, the very first thing I'm seeing is I'm getting more jitter and more wobble from this pen. And generally, that's been my experience. I'm gonna pull open my settings here. I just wanted to show you that right now, now the Bamboo Ink Plus is synced up via Bluetooth. So I, I do have this thing connected properly, I think, and working the way it should be working. I'm going to increase my pen size now that I start to get a feel for it, and I'm going to press very lightly, and one thing that you are gonna notice with Entry devices is that uh, the initial activation force is, is kind of heavy. If you use an Apple Pencil or, or a Wacom device, you're gonna notice right away that as soon as you just even put the tip on the canvas, it is going to leave a line, and this isn't necessarily going to do that. You have to apply a little bit of pressure. So if you're someone who's a very light sketcher and doesn't like that, this is this is not something that's gonna work out really well for you. And it's not just the bamboo pen, it's also the surface pen in general. So when I press the lightest, you get something very light, I apply pressure. Overall, I feel like the pressure the pressure curve works really well here. I'm getting like a good thick line. Once that activation kicks in, I get a really thin line if I press a little little lightly. So overall, I feel like the pressure curve is just fine and I get the same feeling from this. I feel like this kicks in a little bit sooner. The pressure's about the same, but I'm not getting quite as light of a line at the beginning. But to, for the most part, these two feel very similar to me. Next up, I wanna do some fast lines. So let me shrink my uh, brush size down a little bit and I'm just gonna come in here and do really fast lines just to get a feel for what's what's happening. That's pretty much what I expected. Gonna jump to the other stylus now. Let's see how this does and as I was saying, I, I do feel a little bit of pressure difference here. The surface stylus comes on stronger a little bit earlier, thus I'm getting slightly thicker lines when I'm hatching, whereas this is not. Also, again, I'm seeing more wave, more wobble in this pen than I am in the surface pen. So let's jump over to our pen tests and, and really start to dissect that. All right, so the first thing that I like to do is just take the pen and draw a slow diagonal line and just see how that is. 
I feel some jitter in there. It's not too bad. I'm going to use a ruler uh, just to make sure I'm using a nice wooden ruler so I'm not throwing anything off here. So let's take a look at a slow, steady line with this pen. What do we get? We get a pretty uniform wave going on here, which is pretty much what I expected. Uh, so now let's take this pen, the bamboo pen, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get a good grip on it and I'm going to just start drawing. I'm going to draw slow and again I'm getting more wave uh, with this pen than I was getting with the standard surface pen. And we're going to come in here with my ruler. I'm going to do the same thing. Angled lines and again I'm getting a pretty uniform wave going on here and so that has been my experience so far drawing with these pens is that uh, with Intrig, I always feel like I'm getting some wave, but I feel like I'm getting more of it on the bamboo that I'm getting with the standard surface pen. So the big question here is, is this worth buying? And I have to say, no, I really like what Wacom does. I love Wacom's products. I think Wacom makes some of the best pens and pen displays on the market right now. But as you saw there, the Surface Pro pen just performs better than this does. And they both cost about $100. Now, if this was considerably cheaper, like $30, $40 cheaper, I could say, yeah, if you're using it for handwriting, taking notes, and basically Windows Ink type functions, go ahead, save the money, get the cheaper pen. The Surface Pen has the added benefit of being designed specifically for the Surface device you're using. It's magnetized, so it sticks to the side of your Surface like a boss. I think this pen, Wacom's new pen, its best attribute is also its biggest weakness. And that is, is you have two pens in one pen. You you have basically taken the guts from an Intrigue pen and stuck it in here and the guts from Wacom's own AES pen and you put it in the same place. But most people, they only have one computer they're using. They don't necessarily need a pen that functions on two different kinds of tablets. And since you're putting more technology into the pen, that's gonna drive up the price. And I can't find a way to really justify saying this works better. I mean, on, on one end, this button is already calibrated to work with Windows Ink, but if you're talking about the Surface Pen, you could actually just go in and customize it to do the same exact thing. I think the reason this exists is so Wacom can go to consumers and say, hey, if you buy this pen, you know it's gonna work on whatever Windows PC you have. But right now, you can buy a Windows PC that doesn't support any pens, or you can buy a Windows PC that doesn't have touch at all. So overall, probably not a bad idea, but also probably not the best fit for artists and illustrators. Thank you guys for watching. Check out some of my other Surface reviews over here on this side of the screen. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below. That's all I've got. I'll see you in a couple of days.